Welcome. This is a short expository talk about some topics which I'm very excited about. It's graph theory, it's uh, information theory, it's a little bit of quantum mechanics and it's chess. We have a great time of chess, a lot of nice movies and shows about chess like Queen's Gambit. The first part is about the Shannon capacity. It's a number I'm very fascinated about because it's easy to define but very difficult to compute. And it's like Lyapunov exponents I was working for a decade on in dynamical system theory, which is easy to define but very hard to compute in general. If you take a graph and you look at the independence number of the graph, which is the number of independent vertices you can choose. It's a packing problem so that two vertices are, which you have chosen are not adjacent. So how many can you pack into a graph? And then you take the powers, the Shannon powers. We have talked about this Shannon ring a couple of times. You take the powers of this graph and you look how, how this grows. This grows exponentially, of course, but the, the growth rate uh, is not so clear. So Shannon himself, uh, when he introduced this number, he was looking at small examples and computed it for many small graphs. He also computed for the, for the C5, that was the smallest graph where he could not determine the Shannon capacity, have it for n equal to 2 when you look at the second power of the graph. And uh, he already realized you can put 5 you can put five. That's actually the case here. In this situation here, we have five, uh, C5 times C5. So that's the, that's the product graph. And uh, two, two vertices are adjacent if the king can go from one to the other. So th these are adjacent the nodes. These are not adjacent. Of course, if you are in three dimensions, you have already a, <laughs> a harder uh, chess problem, but it continues. What happened is in the case of n equal to 2, so you have a lower bound square root of 5, and then uh, Laszlo Lovas uh, got the upper bound. He, he found uh, a general upper bound, which is very excited, exciting and which is related to umbrellas. So uh, the Lovas umbrella uh, will play an important role for upper bounds, and this upper bound just turned out to be it's an umbrella with, which gives the upper bound square root of 5. We know for C5 that the, the Shannon capacity is square root of 5. I will illustrate this in a, in a DNA, in a fictional DNA story about a new type of DNA. But it's a very uh, interesting problem because it is open already for the heptagon, for the C7. The complement of C7 is a nice Möbius strip. Maybe I'll show you the Möbius strip here. That's a, an interesting thing always to look also at the complement. There are complementary problems and complementary which are equivalent. For the heptagon, one doesn't know. Uh, so one has a lower bound by just looking also at the chess packing problem. I have that here. So there are two, four, six, eight, ten. You can sort of square root of ten is a lower bound. And then there is also a, a, Lovas, a Lovas umbrella a upper bound. There's a nice article of Donald Knuth. You know, the author of the, you know, the Bible on com com computing, the art of computing, and uh, uh, Knuth wrote a very nice article about the sandwich theorem. As far as I know, this is this is the sharpest thing we know for C7. I could be wrong. I still have to look at the at the uh, literature a little bit. There is a general problem you can ask here, which is an interesting problem. Say in C5, we have already after two iterations, we had a locking. So this Shannon capacity was an algebraic number. It's the square root of five. And so you can ask yourself, there is also algebraic numbers, whether, whether you get an algebraic number, whether there's a locking, whether there is a, is it true that, uh, that this uh, Shannon, uh, Shannon capacity is actually equal to uh, alpha of the independence number of g to the n over 1 over n for some n. <clears throat> so that's an interesting problem that the upper bound is the square root of 10 that we are locking, but it could also be that the locking comes later at some later power, or that it never comes, that it's uh, maybe even a transcendental number, some non-algebraic number. Part 2 is an illustration of this Shannon capacity in communication. There is a, 
a nice booklet which I want to advertise where this where I actually learned this story and where some uh, communication story in the spy business is used as a motivation. I want to kind of use a more biological example. So what we always have in this communication channel is an alphabet. So in this case, and that was Shannon looked at, is an alphabet of five letters. So what happens is these letters can be confused. Some of them can be confused and that's called the error graph of this uh, communication channel. And what you want to do is you want to have an independent set such that you have secure communication. So in this case, for example, A and S is an independent set. What happens is the alpha of C5 is 2. You can now ask yourself, can you do better by using words? So this is an example how you can use words of two letters. For example, A, 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 T, A. Uh, when you use this pair of letters, what happens is they cannot be confused with each other. They are, they are not adjacent in this uh, graph product. product. So you can distinguish in this graph product between A, A and S, G. And then you can use five, five words. So with doubling the number of letters, you can instead of four you can already you can transmit five different states which is which is which is better so you have improved your communication by using a pair now you can ask yourself can you do better can you use three words of three and that's what Shannon did not know but uh, Lowell's proved that you cannot you cannot do better so you cannot improve that bound by using more powers. So what I what I kind of thought about would be nice, so you're on Andromeda, Andromeda in some galaxy far away, you are on a planet and there is a similar DNA structure uh, of creatures there than we have, but there are five nucleotides. There is also this pairing, it's actually irrelevant for here, but you have to, you, you pair them pair them up with some with some with something else so that you can replicate uh, when you have a, arranged it on a helix you can you can split it up and build two can we build a better genetic code when we kind of build a, a quadruple helix when we have words of two nucleotides which we use instead of one and that's that story it's exactly that story of uh, uh, Shannon we can actually have now five different five different uh, uh, nuclear pairs which cannot be confused so that's safe and then again you can pair them up with with other pairs which then allow you uh, replication so what you do instead of a <coughs> helix with pairs of nucleotides adenine guanine zitanine cytosine and thymine here on earth what you do is you have now kind of a quadruple helix and then you have pairs of nucleotides so that was part two uh, in part three, I want to uh, talk a little bit about this Lovas umbrella. It's actually a very interesting story and also interesting from a point of view of quantum mechanics. What you can uh, think, so here in this case, case we have this graph. The graph consists of nodes and they are connected with each other. What you can think of is that at every point of the, or every node of the graph, you have a quantum state attached. So a quantum state in math mathematics, if it's a pure state, is just a unit vector in a Hilbert space. And uh, if it is a uh, more general, uh, entangled states, etc., so they can be modeled by what one calls density matrices. So think about every point, it's kind of like a quantum mechanical system, which is in a state. And so we attach to every node, we attach such a quantum state. And now what is important in kind of for Ca causality reasons in quantum mechanics that uh, if you have two nodes which are not connected then the states should be perpendicular should be uncorrelated so by the way the, there is a dot product also for density matrices density matrices are just positive uh, definite uh, uh, indefinite matrices self-adjoint matrices such as the sum of the trace class and the sum of the eigenvalues is one it's the framework which you use in quantum mechanics i was actually interested here in the case in the in the question whether with such a more general framework you can get better lower umbrellas but that's not the case you cannot do better so the the best uh, will be pure states which you which you attach so this is the graph the c5 states so the states are actually here unit vectors this is zero 
unit vector, we want to have them perpendicular if they are not attached to each other. So that's what it is. That's actually pretty close to the Lovas umbrella for C5. And additionally, we have a, a vacuum, which uh, Lovas already called C. Uh, this is the stick. You know, this is the stick of the umbrella. What we want now is we want to look at the maximal angle between any of these vectors and the vacuum. So, and then we want to build an umbrella such that this is as small as possible, this infimum over all possible umbrellas, and then we take the maximal angle. So in this case, here we want to make this maximal. So we make this maximal, which means that the angle is minimal. And you can check relatively easily that independence number is bound above by this, uh, actually bound by any of these, uh, of these numbers here. So that produces a number which is called the Lovatz number. There's also a, an upper bound called the sandwich theorem. So there's the independence number, there's this Lovatz number, and there's the click covering number. How many clicks do you need? Maximal clicks do you need to cover the, cover the graph? That's this a beautiful framework, which also brings in a little bit of quantum mechanics for graph. Think about the graph, your, your system, and every node is a quantum mechanical system and this is, a, this is a framework which you want to have. And then things which are connected to each other can interact. Things which are not connected with, to each other, they cannot interact. And so you want to have them independent. So this is a very, very natural framework also from a physics point of view. What is very important is that if you take the power of graphs, this Shannon product, if you take the power of graphs, this becomes just a tensor product. So we have I've talked about the curvature in differential geometry. The, the curvature also becomes a tensor product, just becomes the product. So it's the most natural thing which can happen. So in this case, this is a tensor product in Hilbert space or space of uh, you know, density matrices. And uh, what happens is then the, the, the Lovatz numbers multiply. But what happens is whether you take the power or not, so uh, theta of g to the n to the 1 over n is just theta of g, so that doesn't change. This might change, that might be bigger, but, 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 but it, it, it is always bound above by this, uh, by this uh, uh, Lovas number. Also, another question you can ask, is there always such a Lovas, you know, umbrella, which it gives you the upper bound? Maybe this is not, in general, not sharp. Maybe there is some case where really you don't have a such as this, you have to do something else to find an, an upper bound. It's a very, very interesting story because it's very basic. It starts essentially from the ground up in graph theory. There's some very basic uh, uh, a quantum mechanics uh, associated with it, uh, some, some information theory. You can, you can look at chess, chess packing problems. For example, this is a, a chess I bought, which is called Strato Chess. Uh, I show you maybe a little video where I play with my son. I also played other chess variants like uh, three man chess. So there are all kind of, there's a whole book about different chess variants. Fischer, for example, was building a chess where you randomly per permute the, permute the uh, initial positions under some conditions like that. The, 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 the bishops are still on different colors. And there are uh, various chess, like our chess, which we are using, or, you know, a human made. You know, there are so many different chesses which you can, chess games you can play. Fischer was kind of building 960 different chess games. And you can change the N, you can change the dimension. Like in Star Trek, there is a kind of a little, maybe I'll show a little clip here from one of the early Star Trek movies where a three-dimensional chess appears. In this case, they are actually just the same number of the same figures and the same number of figures that you have in, in the usual chess. And one of the things I was contemplating one is eight times eight times eight chess, where the whole bottom is filled with uh, main figures. So there are rooks outside, then there are horses, then there are or knights, then there are bishops, and then there are three queens and one uh, then comes a whole layer of pawns, and you do that also for the other 
for the other opponent. So it might be, you know, some of these games might just have a, a winning a, a winning strategy. And that's, of course, they're not so interesting. Uh, packing problems, this is kind of a, a God-given problem. You know, if you have a, a n times n times n board and you ask yourself how many kings can you can you pack there? This is a very, very natural problem. So packing problems are very, packing problems are very, very natural. And you can, this, this independence number is a packing problem. And, and the problem of Shannon is you take powers of this graph and you look how this independence number grows. And uh, I just uh, finish here. Uh...